This one is from Don Rosa, one of the uh, one of the best um, duck artists, I think. He was one of the first people I asked for a drawing many many years ago. This one is from from Jock. He is uh, quite famous now for his uh, Batman comic books. We worked together on the movie uh, The Raid, and he was so kind and draw me this um, Batman on a gargoyle. I was born and raised in the GDR, and um, when I was very young, um, um, some some of my uh, family um, people sent me little Asterix um, books um, to the um, to the GDR, which was not that easy. And I loved them from the beginning. And later, I got the bigger ones. And after Germany was one country, um, I really started collecting comic books. First, mostly Disney stuff. Then. The superheroes, then the more adult stuff. Now it's about 15,000 books I have at home. That's the problem of um, Albert Uda, so the Asterix uh, inventor. He did some, um, he actually uh, drew in some of the albums, but um, yeah, I have never had the chance to meet um, Albert Uda so in person. I really collect everything I'm interested in. They must have a good story and, and nice drawings, um, and then um, I'm already excited. <laughs> I was born and raised in the GDR, and um, we haven't had much TV channels there, and we had no video cassettes or stuff like that. I was watching films on the two um, television channels we had. I tried to get every one I could, I could catch because um, it was really amazing for me. My mom always said I shouldn't watch so many movies um, because it will not help me in the future. I should more concentrate on school, but well, here I am. After Germany we got one country, I, I started visiting um, video stores and, and check out movies which I was not able to watch before and um, started collecting movies and, and I think I watched a lot of movies in my time. Uh, well, we had two western channels in, in the town uh, where, where I uh, grew up um, over um, Antenna. Of course, we had no cable or satellite or something like this, but um, yeah, we were able to get um, the two main public um, television uh, broadcasters. Yeah, they, they um, show, for example, every Saturday evening a movie. Um, yeah, mostly comedies, and some children movies, sometimes a thriller or something like this. If you wanted to kind of uh, get hold of, of, of films, how did you do that? Did you like uh, could you go buy it on black market or, or how did you? No, in GDR that was not, not possible. There wasn't really a market for, for movies. It was just you could watch it on television and if they hadn't shown it on television you were not able to, to watch them. Oh, because um, you did not have a video player. Yeah, that's right. That was, that was not common in, in, in Eastern Germany uh, to have, to have um, a video player or something. I was, I was 10 years old when Germany um, became one. One year before we flew um, over Hungary and Austria to, to Western Germany, we were some other refugees in, 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 a, in a little hotel in Bavaria. So there was one TV for, for um, everyone there, um, but um, that was also actually quite nice. I have studied uh, media economics because I actually always wanted to work in movie business. I haven't thought about doing this as some kind of director or producer, but I knew I think I could work in some kind of to organize stuff and to, to do project management. I'm the head of product uh, management at Koch Films. We release like 15 titles per month, some theatrically, some on digital, on DVD, Blu-ray, UHD, you name it. DVD is actually declining, a declining market, but we at Koch are quite stable. I think it's because we um, do interesting movies, which people really would like to see. Like we had um, the Oscar-winning Parasite. We do a lot of classic movies, which we release in mostly special editions with special features. Yeah, we, we want 
our customers to have a good experience with their movies. We still see it as some kind of um, labor of love to, to release most of the movies we do. We released an old Fox Western Big Trail with John Wayne. John Wayne wasn't a huge star back then, but um, the movie was a huge one. Back in those days, they didn't do dubbings for the movies, but in some cases, when you had a big movie star, like for example, Laurel Mahardy, they tried um, to speak uh, their scenes in different languages. For other movies, um, they did the scene first with the English-speaking actor, then they did the German-speaking actor, and the French-speaking actor, and so on. In the case of Big Trail, it was also that they did the English scenes all with uh, John Wayne, and um, they did the German scenes, for example, with, with um, a German actor. So they released the movie theatrically in Germany without John Wayne, but with a German actor playing his role. So of course, when we wanted to release the movie on Blu-ray, we would we wanted to have this version included, but it was very rare. No one in Germany has it. It was part of the movies which were taken by the Red Army after World War II. So I wrote to the film department in Moscow and asked them if they still have um, the elements of this German version of Big Trail. And um, they were very kind and said, yes, we have it and um, we can do a transfer of it for you. And I said, great. <laughs> let's do this, um, can you please send it over? And so now we have uh, the German version of Big Trail included in our edition. Well, one of um, Koch Film's bestsellers of all times is um, the American sitcom uh, King of Queens. And um, over the years we did um, a lot of um, complete box sets um, with, with the whole series included. Um, the first one we did, that was before my time, was uh, the truck version with uh, this um, IPS truck. It has all the DVDs included here in the back. And we did um, a fridge box, which you can open and have all the DVDs there included. We had um, a mailbox, which you also can open and take out all the discs and um, a bowling ball version and um, um, locker room version and um, yeah, some more. How many hours have you spent in, in line to get this going, do you think? Um, many, many hours. Um, I think it was 1998, it was near the end of my school times and I, it was the first time I went to, um, to a comic festival. It's different to what other people know as comic cons, um, it's more coming from the publishers and they invite um, artists from all over the world. It was a festival in, in Erlangen, that's near Nuremberg and very famous for the um, comic festival which takes place um, every two years. I went there with nearly no preparation or anything and just wanted to check it out and there I got uh, my first um, sketches and drawings from artists. I think the first one was Jeff Smith, the, the guy who did the Bone comics, which are really amazing. Yeah, I was there I think back then for two or three days and I think I collected there like five, six drawings, but um, it, was, it was really amazing for me. So I, I um, kept doing this and visited comic festivals and, and comic stores where they did signings and stuff and um, yeah, now I have about I think 260 drawings. So this one is from um, Jesus Merigno, he is um, a very famous artist for DC and Marvel and um, I met him in Erlangen and um, asked him to draw um, a Thor for me and it's quite interesting because he, he first began um, with this uh, blue sketch and wasn't happy with it, so uh, he skipped that and did um, another one and finished that one. And I really like that one. This one is a drawing of um, the comic Is No Good. It's a very famous French comic book. It's now drawn by the son of the original artist. Um, it's Nicolas Tabary. We did this in um, two times. I went, uh, I met him at the comic festival here in Munich, and on the first day, I asked him to uh, draw me this character, 
and on the second day I met him again and um, asked him to draw Iznukut in the background and um, he liked that very much. Mm -hmm.